How are you feeling? You got John Reeks here talking about the 10 best games for the Sega Genesis. Now in the past, I've done hidden gems, I've done must play games, underrated games, but just one of the best ones. We're talking about just the best of the best. If you had to have 10 games on your console, what are the 10 best ones to have? And starting with a game you might be surprised would come in at number 10. Yeah, that's right, Sonic the Hedgehog. Now this is the first one. This is the introduction. This is the first time we ever saw Sonic or anything about Sonic was in Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis. Now again, I have a lot of love for the Sega Genesis. It was the first console I ever bought with my own money. I delivered papers at 12 years old, saved up enough money so I could buy my own Sega Genesis. And during that time, it was right when Altered Beast was removed from the pack-in and Sonic the Hedgehog, they had so much plans, so much hype behind this game. Sonic the Hedgehog came free with your Sega Genesis. So when I went out and I bought the console, it came with the game already, and that was good news for me. It's great to see how far Sonic the Hedgehog has come in the last 30 years, but it all started with this game, and so many of today's Sonic the Hedgehog games, and even ones in the future, all stem from what you find in this original game. The colors, the music, the sound, the layers of scrolling in the background and all that. It was insane for its time. And unlike Super Mario Brothers, which is kind of lenient, it's just moving from left to right, right? I mean, it might go up a little bit, maybe like up another screen, but not too far beyond that. Sonic the Hedgehog, each level is like its own world. I mean, you can move up and down. There's multiple ways to get to the end. It's insane, all the exploration you can do in this game. It's crazy. And love the fact that you could even get that bonus ending if you picked up all the Chaos Emeralds. It's completely optional, but it's another way to give you an extra challenge in a game that maybe you've already played through and gives you a reason to keep playing as well. And love the fact with the rings, so long as you have one ring, you're in for another round. <laughs> Make sure you just have one ring on you at all times. If you drop your rings, grab another ring so you can keep playing. I love it. Downfall being, you're way too fast. I mean, it's one of those games you just go, you keep going fast, you pick up all these rings, and then all of a sudden you run into spikes, or you run into an enemy that you didn't predict was going to be there. That happens more often than not. But still, when it comes to the Sega Genesis, it all starts with Sonic the Hedgehog. And again, this is a list of 10, so it may not be the last time we see Sonic the Hedgehog in this list. In honor of Sonic's 30th anniversary, Zabby.com has cool things like the awesome shirt I'm wearing. Got the uh, stainless steel thermos here. Use Rigs 20 to save 20% off uh, shirts and clothing. Use Rigs 10 to save 10% off accessories at Zabby.com. Links in the description below. Now, how about an awesome platformer from Konami that never made it to the NES or even the Super Nintendo? That's right, we're talking about Rocket Knight Adventures. This is the perfect game if you grew up with, you know, let's say the Super Nintendo, you're not really too sure on what games you should play for the Sega Genesis, this is going to be right up your alley, I promise. This, of course, is during a time when anthropomorphic animals were the hot selling ticket item here. So we got <laughs> Rocket Knight Adventures here, and what a fun game this is. You can jump, you can use your sword to attack people, but then because yeah, it's called Rocket Knight Adventures, right? Rocket, you can use your rocket to, you know, zoom towards, uh, forwards, and crash into enemies that way. You can zoom straight up to uh, maybe reach hard to reach platforms in a diagonal angle to do super leaps over, over cliffs and other larger enemies, all that. This game is so great, man. It's just one of those, they should have released this on the Super Nintendo. They could have released this maybe even on the NES, but if you want to play this game, it's only available on your Sega Genesis, which is why it needs to be on this list of the top 10 games for the Sega Genesis. It seems like they really pushed the system's limits as well with how many moving things can be on screen, how many colors they can use on this on a single screen or anything like that too. Great action platformer with the cartoony look from Konami. Konami, one of the kings, especially for their time, for video games of their time, especially platformers. If you have a Sega Genesis, it is worth your while to have a copy of Rocket Knight Adventures at your side for sure. Well, we can go old school arcade style with Alien Storm for the Sega Genesis. This was an earlier release title, but still super fun today. There are so many beat em ups out there, and there's nothing wrong with beat em ups, but this plays kind of like that, but you're not really beating them up. You're using your weapons on these aliens, and these aliens just look so weird and grotesque and kind of cool, really. Now, instead of doing like punch punch kick style combos, you'll do like gun gun flamethrower grenade. <laughs> or <laughs> things like that uh, for your for your combos for defeating these enemies. This game is a two-player simultaneous game, and that was one of the great things about the Sega Genesis was so many of their games were two-player simultaneous. So you can definitely have two players on this one. It's going to be easier for you if you do. Not just side-scrolling beat em up but they'll also go to these first-person modes where you're shooting things, kind of like an Operation Wolf style kind of thing. You know, it gives you that shooting technique and style. Just a little variety, a little change up the gameplay a little bit to keep it interesting. 
three playable characters on this one, each of them with their own uh, personalities, each of them with, I mean, their own characters, really, their own weapons and all that. You got a man, a woman, and a robot. Yeah, you, gotta, you, gotta, you can play as a robot in this game. And the robot's actually kind of cool. And the man in this game, I mean, you can't go wrong, really. I mean, they're all great, no matter who you play as, no matter who you choose to uh, operate in this game. It's gonna be a fun experience all the same. Even fun that they all have their own kind of, you know, weapon crash, I guess you'd call it. Like that, that save me, I'm in, a, I'm in a rut, there's too many enemies on screen. Cool to see that the woman has basically a bomb, <laughs> just like a giant nuclear bomb that destroys everything except for her. Nothing wrong with that. The man has like an airstrike where like, you know, a ship will come down or, in, you know, or it might just be like some phantom bolts that will come out of nowhere. That's kind of cool too. Interesting to see that the robot blows himself up. And that's his special attack, as he blows himself up, and then his uh, reserve body comes back, screws his head back on, and right back into the gameplay. Oh, man. Fun game, interesting title. It was new for its time because we didn't really see games like this at the time. So it's so fun to see, and still a super fun game today. You want to check out Alien Storm for sure. Right, so... If you weren't from the day, you don't know exactly how popular Michael Jackson was. Now, this is when Michael Jackson was doing the Moonwalker. It had like the, there was like an actual film that featured a bunch of his songs, the, the Smooth Criminal videos, all of his music videos on MTV were basically short films. And I want to say that he actually referred to them as mini movies. Every single one of them, um, all of the music videos were amazing. And Michael Jackson during this Moonwalker time, still at kind of the, the peak of what he was doing, but even earlier Michael Jackson, Again, you can't deny how popular he was. I mean, he was like world renowned, everybody knew him. I remember in the early 80s, I mean, you'd see big truck drivers, motorcycle, you know, just like these really burly buff looking guys, mean, you know, scowl on their face, listening to Michael Jackson, everybody did. I mean, naturally he was in the tabloids and all that too, and that could be another video for another time. But the game itself, I think, is super, super fun. Now there was an arcade version of the game, I wish we got that one at home, uh, but this one for the Sega Genesis, I still think is, is pretty fun and definitely worth having. So yeah, you have your kind of Michael Jackson dance moves <laughs> as your weapon, as you kind of uh, kick off this magic or you kind of like uh, punch or throw the, this magic sparkle stuff, but it's, you know, that aside, I mean, come on. <laughs> You're looking for the kidnapped children. This is kind of tying in with the Moonwalker film that they had, where you know the bad guy kidnaps the kids. You gotta try to you know save them and everything like that. Interesting enough, you find all the kids. You get your pet monkey, Bubbles. Bubbles was as much of a personality as Michael Jackson was. It seemed like it was like a right hand man kind of thing, right hand monkey, I guess. And it brings you to a certain part of the stage where you have to defeat all of the enemies that just kind of like come towards you all at once. But the main special attack is if you just hold the button down, everybody joins in on screen and all dances with you. And this ties in with the Michael Jackson Moonwalker music video, because he does that in the, in the music video. And why not throw it into this game? Sure, why not? The different rounds, the different areas have a different theme uh, with the background that kind of relates to the music video and then uh, has the song that kind of accompanies it as well. But all of them are still, find the kidnapped kids, go to the, the screen wherever Bubbles tells you to go, Defeat all those enemies, you move on. And there's just something addicting. I don't know if it's the music, I just don't know if it's the moves <laughs> that you do in this game. Super, super fun game. You can check out Michael Jackson's Boo Locker. All right, up next, an absolute classic. Golden Axe deserves to be on this list because it needs to be on this list. It was such a cool game, especially for its time, where you have three characters you can choose from, again, two players simultaneous and all of them have their own attributes. You know, one of them might be stronger, one of them might be able to use more magic or build up more magic to have a, a more powerful spell. It's up to you. You can play as the, you know, the, the man warrior, the woman, I guess, Valkyrie, and then uh, the dwarf as well with the ax. And no matter who you play as, you're gonna have a fun time. This game can get super cheap where the AI wants to surround you at all times. If there's two people on screen, they'll figure it out. So one's on one side, one's on the other, and they'll start spamming it that way. Avoid that if you can. Much easier to do if you have two players playing at the same time. Loved the idea that you could also ride some of these animals and use them for your attacks as well. But even as you're just walking around, your attacks, I mean, let's be honest, they're kind of limited. You can, you know, you can attack and you can jump. And you do have a kind of like back attack in a way, which, which may or may not help you because sometimes it takes too long to initiate the actual hit part of the attack. <laughs> You're too busy, too busy moving for, for anything to happen. And then you have a running attack, which is always helpful and always nice, because they will run attack you all the time. So just gotta beat them, gotta beat them to the punch if you can. 
and each of the characters have their own elemental magic, which is kind of nice. And depending on how much of the, the magic potions you get along the way, that's how powerful your attack's going to be. So as the woman, if you have it all filled up, it's you, you, you know, your element is fire. So basically a dragon comes down and breathes fire on everyone. Gotta love that. If you only have a couple magic spells built up or whatever, eh, you'll still do a little flame attack. It'll still help you out. The dwarf has lightning. That's pretty cool too. And the man has kind of a, a rock power, but you know, no matter again, no matter how, which way you play this game, no matter how you play it, Golden Axe, an absolute classic, definitely deserves to be on this list. Five down with five to go. Did your game make the list yet? Well, we got five more coming up, so hopefully your game made it. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed. I have so many more of these videos coming out soon for all game systems. I can't tell you how excited I was when they announced X-Men for the Sega Genesis. To wash the taste out of my mouth for the X-Men game that we had on the NES, this one more than made up for it. Now when this game came out, it was during the height of the X-Men comic books, the X-Men cartoon on Fox was super super popular, and this one features a lot of those elements too. From the get-go you can play as Cyclops, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Gambit. And for the time, it seemed like Gambit was like the popular one. I know he was one of my favorites. And all of them play pretty similarly, really, when it comes to their jumping and attacking abilities, but they all have their mutant ability, and depending on where you are and you know what you think you might need for that level, it might come in handy for you. Not just the four playable characters, but also all of the villains and enemies in this game are also famous X-Men villains, which is kind of nice, because you always want to see who's coming up next. Simple enough with the mutant abilities, Gambit will kind of throw his charged card Makes it really handy. Cyclops, well, I mean, he has that Cyclops eye beam. That's always gonna be awesome. Wolverine shouldn't happen. Wolverine, because Wolverine is like, you know, you, you extract your claws and then that counts, which it shouldn't. Uh, however, it does in this game, but whatever. And then Nightcrawler is the cheatinest, because <laughs> he can just teleport through walls as needed. And the levels in this X-Men game, think back to Sonic 1, where you had this whole level and area that you can go through and then you'll go up and down and there's basically this giant room. Uh, it's a lot like that. So if you're, in t if you're in a rough spot, a tight spot or whatever, you can play as Nightcrawler, go through the wall and all that. And you have your other helpers too, we're gonna help you out. So if you have someone like, if you fall down a hole, then G Gray will come out and pull you back out of the hole. Very cool. If the jumping is too hard for you, call on Iceman. He'll just create a, a platform for you, basically. Super fun game, about the perfect length of a platformer like this too. I'm a big fan of this game. You gotta get X-Men for the Sega Genesis, it's so fun. Now this is a huge spoiler alert, so if you haven't done so yet, make sure you just keep double tapping until you get to the next game. But we gotta talk about how it broke the fourth wall on that level where it tells you to reset the system and you actually have to literally reset your Sega Genesis and that's how you get past that level. That blew my mind when I first did that. And the first couple of times I played it, I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm hitting all these buttons for reset. You know, it's like nothing happened. I was like, well, maybe I just hit reset on the console. Sure enough, that was it. Oh my God. Couldn't be a top 10 Sega Genesis list without Gunstar Heroes. Now Treasure made so many amazing, amazing, amazing games and Gunstar Heroes is way up that list. A lot who are a little bit more familiar with like Nintendo than Sega might call this game the Contra of the Sega Genesis, and I can see where they're coming from. It's a side-scrolling run and gun game. It can be two player if you'd like, and it has the weapon upgrade system, which is super cool too. Now you choose your first weapon that you want, and you even get to choose like one of four levels to start as. And along the way, you can pick up more weapons. I love the weapon combo system in this game as well. So like if you have like a rapid fire, that's cool. You got a fire, which is your flamethrower. That's pretty cool too, but you can combine them together and you can kind of throw fire bombs in a way or other things like that. When you get certain items or certain weapons, combine them together, makes it super cool. And I don't know what Treasure is doing to their games that other companies didn't figure out, but so many moving elements on screen can be happening at the same time with no flicker, no slowdown. I don't think I've ever experienced any of that with this game ever. And each level, I mean, just like a lot of other platformers like this or a lot of other run and gun games, each level has its own characteristics, its own personalities, its own boss and everything. Uh, just, it's all, you know, player's choice. It, depending on where you want to go first and what you want to tackle first, that's all you. And at the beginning, along with choosing your own weapon and choosing your area and all that, you can also decide if you want a, um, you know, if you want a run and gun or if you want the fixed shot. And the fixed shot makes it a little bit harder, but there's some benefit to that. Um, it makes it so as soon as you start shooting, you plant your feet in place and you can shoot like all around you. So, you know, if and you can jump while shooting too. So I guess you can keep doing that, but that's easier for you. So I, instead of you know, just holding the button down for rapid fire and running, um, if you shoot manually just by clicking your button, great. Then you can just hold the button down, you plant your feet down. Uh, makes it really handy to like hit bosses at an angle and stuff like that too. So 
Again, player's choice on that one. Gunstar Heroes, amazing. That was one of the coolest cinematics I ever saw in any video game the first time I fired this game up. Revenge of Shinobi. Now there are three Shinobi games for the Sega Genesis. All of them absolutely amazing, but if I had to choose one of them, I would give it up to the first one, Revenge of Shinobi. Well, it plays similarly enough to the classic arcade game, but so much better and so much more involved uh, with this one as well. I mean, Yuzo Kishiro did the music for it. Amazing, right? This game, you can't, I mean, you can also change your options and everything to give you like unlimited shurikens, but you, if you have a finite amount of shurikens and then when you get closer to the enemy, you just use your sword to attack them. So whatever's easiest for you. I do like how when you kind of double jump, you can do like a spray of shurikens. That's always kind of cool. The graphics were great for its time. The mood was perfect. It's one of those games you can, you know, go through and just, just have a fun time every time, still today. You do have your magical ability too. Like you can, you know, defeat all enemies on screen. You can give yourself a little bit of extra strumpf, <laughs> strumpf in your jump, if you will. <laughs> Fun things happening with Revenge of Shinobi. That's why it's got to be on this list of the top best games for the Sega Genesis. I mean, come on, we got to talk about Streets of Rage too. I know a lot of people give it up to Double Dragon or Final Fight, but for my money, Streets of Rage 2 may be one of the most influential beat-em-ups of all time. I mean, this game really set the standard for how awesome a beat-em-up could be for its music, for its gameplay, for um, how easy it is to pick up and play using any of the characters, really. And the different playable characters are always cool, too. Again, two-player simultaneous, such a fun game, and it's a game that you just want to keep playing. You just want to see what's going to happen next. The music iconic still today. It's another one from Yuzo Kishiro. What can I say? I just love the variety that all the playable characters have when it comes to attacking enemies. Now, they all have the same jump and attack and maybe like their, you know, desperation move. Uh, but, you know, some of them have, you know, will like do like punches and kicks and stuff like that. And someone else might do like a backflips or something, uh, especially when it comes to the grappling move. Some of them might just throw them. Some of them might just, you know, give them a body slam, basically. <laughs> give them a German suplex or something. Like with a lot of fighting games, desperation moves are always great to have, but they will also make you lose a little bit of your health. But a little losing a little bit of health versus losing a lot of your health by not doing it, well, you gotta figure that out yourself. Lots of fun levels in this game that keep you playing longer, and it's just, I mean, it, come on, it's Streets of Rage 2. It has to be on this list. It has to. Streets of Rage 1 is pretty good, and Streets of Rage 3 was fine, but it seemed like they were trying too hard with Streets of Rage 3. Was, as good of a game as it was. Streets of Rage 2, I wouldn't change a thing. I think it's flawless. I had a feeling it wasn't the last time we'd see Sonic the Hedgehog. To me, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis is the staple. It is the mid-ring stick. You take everything that was great about Sonic the Hedgehog 1, fine-tune it, fine-tweak it, make it better, add new characters that still stand the test of time today, and you got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It's amazing. I mean, at the end of the day, to be honest with you, it's more of the same as Sonic the Hedgehog. It really is. Different levels, different music, sure, but it's cool because they added Tails, and Tails is actually, you know, gonna help out. It'll actually find some rings. It'll actually, you know, pick you up from falling down a hole or stuff like that. <laughs> if you have a second controller, another player can play as Tails, who is invulnerable, to really help you out. Unlike the weird twisted kind of rotating thing that Sonic the Hedgehog 1 had for getting its Chaos Emerald, I like how they did this one, because this makes it kind of like a cool, you know, toboggan VR style, you know, behind the shoulder, getting all the rings to get where you're going, and then that way, it's easier for you to get the Chaos Emerald. At least it was easier for me. And again, with the cool Eggman or Robotnik uh, bosses in this game that are always fun, they're always, you know, can be challenging, but you can find the pattern and all that. Man, it just makes this game so fun. And they even added a two-player mode as well. You know, player one's on top, player two's on the bottom. So you're still there, but it's still on split screen. It's like, ooh, that's that's interesting. I wonder where else we can go with this. All too much fun to be had with Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And they come out with new Sonic the Hedgehog games all the time. But this one, I mean, come on, this one's where it's at. I know I left out a lot of great games on this list, so you let me know in the comments which ones I left off. Underrated Sega Genesis games, we covered the top 10, but what are the underrated Sega Genesis games? You watch this video right here. Thank you so much. Again, make sure you're subscribed because we're talking about best games for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Arcade, and more all coming up in the very near future. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you super soon.